Hey, I'm Hannah. Thanks for watching. Okay, today I am sharing a recap of the yarn shops that I visited um, on a recent trip to Europe with my family. I have yarn shops to share from Amsterdam and Brussels and Paris. So I will be giving um, kind of an overview of the vibes of the shop, the yarns there, um, how easy they are to get to, and um, what I got, because I got some great yarn. And then um, I asked for like, if you guys had any questions, and one was the tourist question, like, is it easy to get to? And the second one was, was the yarn marked up? Um, and what were the prices like? So that's kind of the only spicy, like, hot take per se that I have um, on the shops because, spoiler, I really enjoyed all of them. But yes, some of the shops were extremely marked up and some of them were um, a lot cheaper than others. So I will share that as well. And yeah, hopefully it's helpful for you if you're planning to travel to these places or if you just want to um, see what yarn shops are like around the world. <laughs> so let's get started. Um, the first shop that I visited was in Amsterdam. This was like the classic, iconic yarn shop. I'm sure you already know, <laughs> um, Stephen and Penelope. So let me know if you have visited there. Um, I had not been before. I had not been to Amsterdam before either. And so anyway, yes, that was the first place we went. Let me pull up my notes because I don't want to forget anything. <laughs> I took a lot of notes. I didn't get a lot of like vlog footage. One, because I didn't feel comfortable asking the yarn shop owners about like if I could record in their stores. And so I just took a few pictures um, of the yarns. But yeah, I'm really not. I've learned like on this trip, I learned I'm just like not a vlogger. Like maybe one day, but trying to like <laughs> keep up with our bags and our stuff. And then keep up with my son, keep up with my son's favorite stuffed animal, keep up with all the snacks we need, like keep everyone on track on the map. Like my phone kept dying because I was doing all the, I did all like the planning and the mapping and I like that kind of thing. So it was like not an issue between that sort of thing, but like my phone died like halfway through every day. I was like always sitting in the coffee shop trying to charge it so we'd know where to go. It's just not, it wasn't for me on this trip. Like maybe when my son is older and I can focus more on like what I'm doing, but all that to say, I don't have a lot of videos and things like that. I have a few pictures and I'll do a lot of like describing. <laughs> so the first place, Stephen and Penelope, um, I'm sure many of you been there, have been there. It's the like iconic Amsterdam shop. It's the iconic tourist shop, um, especially right now with the make along going on. Stephen West is huge. Um, his patterns are huge. He just seems like um, just a staple in the knitting industry, lots of collaborations, things like that. So the shop vibes, it was lovely. Um, it was tiny. <laughs> it just like went straight back, but that's that's normal. Like it was normal size for Amsterdam, I'm assuming. Um, when you walk in, it's like the yarn is covering everything because the, they need all the room they can get. Um, yeah, it, the, the people who worked there were super kind. I think they were used to like tourists coming in and getting like, you know, spending an hour trying to find the one perfect skein of yarn that they can afford. Um, it was full of tourists. I, it was like the most touristy place we went, which is funny. <laughs> um, and that's fine. Like it's, again, these aren't like bad things. These are just the vibes of the shop. And, um, the yarn though, uh, it was a lot of like expensive yarn. And so you and I probably have different like budgets and, you know, lifestyles and things like that. So for me personally, I tend to purchase more commercial yarns. I would say on the lower end of like a mid price range. Um, so that's just like my, my budget and, and how I spend that. And so, um, to me, the yarns felt, felt very expensive, but also like they were the nice yarns. So like <laughs> La Bien Ami, there was Aramisu, um, Life in the Long Grass, A Room of My Own, Walk Yarns, those, all those like big brand fancy yarns. <laughs> they had a few yarns that I felt like were more affordable. They had um, De Rurum Natura, which is like in the upper end of my personal price range. Um, but again, this this depends. They have Holst yarn too, Holst yarn. But it depends on what you want to make as well. If you just want to make a hat, like you can just make a $30 hat. But <laughs> you know, if you want a sweater's quantity, then that's like a, a lot of money. Um, but we all have different budgets, so I'm just sharing like what, what my take was on it. Um, 
mask. The yarn itself, like it just felt very exclusive. Like a lot of the colorways, so they were exclusive or they were partnerships, things like that. So it felt not bad, but just like, ooh, this is so cool. Like this is my Stephen and Penelope yarn and it's so exclusive and fancy. Um, and that was kind of cool to see. I really liked their shop yarn, which was bicycle yarn, maybe. They had two different kinds. One, I don't remember the name, and the second one was tandem because it was like double the weight of the first one, which I thought was like really cute and clever and um, surprisingly like punny for such a fancy shop. Um, but that is the kind of wool that I just love. Like it was non super wash, but it was like worsted spun. And so it just felt strong and light and warm and soft and like all the colors. And I just like wanted that. So I was like, this is just so beautiful. I didn't get any, but if I went back, I definitely would. I will put a picture, but they had this cutest balaclava and it just felt so good. But then I held it up to myself and I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm a balaclava girl, but if I was like, this would be the yarn for it. It was like, it was just beautiful. So I really liked their bicycle yarn. Um, okay. Something else you guys asked was, was there a markup since we're speaking of yarn? <laughs> Um, yeah, I felt like this yarn was really marked up compared to prices I see in the U.S. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I, it wasn't like $10, like 10 U.S. dollars, but definitely like most of the hand dyed yarn and, um, just like it was starting at like 33 to 35 euros, like for starting. And so, um, yes. And I also read this before I went that a lot of the yarn there was marked up and that you could find it cheaper in other places. Again, it wasn't my goal to like find the cheapest yarn, but I am always down for like the, the, the cheapest yarn, right? <laughs> um, and it's not like a moral thing. I'm just, just saying like when you're thinking about like, do you want to buy your sweaters quantity here or do you want to buy a special single skein to say like, I went there, I was there. It just depends on what you want. But I did find like, um, yeah, like the knitting for olive that they carried, it was marked up. Um, yeah, like again, it's fine, but that's just how it is. Um, my favorite feature of this yarn shop, one was the books they carried. They had every book I could ever hope to read, ever. <laughs> like you can go on their website and just scroll through all the books that they had. It was amazing. They had this huge setup of just books and they were just all beautiful and I would put them all on my coffee table. Um, and I would just read them by myself. Although my son really enjoyed this yarn shop. I think this was his favorite. He took so many pictures of the yarn and he loved talking to the people there. <laughs> um, so yeah, the book display and the books they carried were wonderful. The second thing I really liked was the designer display. So when you walk in the shop, the first thing you see on the right is a designer display. So I think they do a designer of the month. Um, this isn't new information, but I just really liked it. <laughs> and I think I liked it because the month we were there, it was Jennifer Berg. And I really like her patterns and what she stands for and just like her kind of um, building community aspect and how she um, just really stands up for, for what she believes in in her community. And I think that's beautiful. So I was really excited to see like her work being promoted in such a... Um, like large scale way, I guess. Like I can only imagine how many people walk through those doors every day. And the first thing you see when you walk in is her like samples and her picture and what she's doing in her community. So I felt excited because I was like, wow, this is awesome. Like she's being promoted by like this yarn shop and they don't like have to do that. Like, I don't know, do they have to pay to be there? That seems silly. Um, I don't know. But anyway, I was just really excited to see like them lifting up designers because I think she's a big designer like to me yeah that was very cool to see the the designer spotlight um okay I'll tell you what I purchased now this is kind of a funny story so my mom and my sister have both been to this yarn shop separately and I believe what happened was this could be wrong but my mom went and she got my sister some yarn and so when my sister got around to making it she realized it wasn't enough yarn so then I think she went back and got one more <laughs> But then she looked at it again and she was like, oh, wait, I need a contrast color. And so, because she was only looking at the main color, maybe, I don't really know what happened. It could have been ju just my mom went and then she went and they didn't have it or she bought it and then she didn't get a contrast color. I have no idea. But when I went back, she asked if I could get more. So I did. So this is the color that she had. 
This is Lin yarn. I don't know. I've never heard of it. It's beautiful linen. Um, it's 100 grams, 420 meters. Um, this is a colorway olive. They were running out of colors when I was there, so I don't know if they're going to restock it or not. But yeah, just this lovely green um, color. And then I also really like this. Um, I got this for the, they didn't have like the gray that was suggested for the pattern. So I like this Umbra colorway. And I thought this was lovely um, to be the contrast color. So the pattern, I'll put a picture. The pattern is called Everyday Attitude by Suzanne Summer. And I guess like that is what my sister intended when she got this yarn. So I got it for both of us now to make one. So we hopefully have enough yarn. <laughs> for both of us to make a gold and olive colored striped linen top and our plan is if we don't have enough she'll just take all the olive and I'll just take all the gold and we'll have solid colors um I think that's the plan unless she wants the gold and I want the olive but I don't know anyway hopefully there's enough <laughs> if not if anyone goes back to Amsterdam let me know and I might have to buy some more yarn from you um okay so that is what I got and then the last thing was is it tourist the, the question i got from you guys that i got a few times was is it tourist friendly like is it easy to get to is it in a touristy area that kind of thing yes i would say of the yarn shops that i'll mention this is the most like location wise touristy friendly so if you haven't been to amsterdam um i'm not a expert <laughs> i've been once for like three days um but we use the trams a ton and they're super easy to use, even with a two-year-old. Um, and they're very intuitive. You just, I just put in Google Maps where I wanted, clicked on the little you know, public transit option, and it was super easy. And so this wasn't really close to where we were staying, but it was only like 15, 20 minutes on the um, tram. So that to me is pretty close. And um, yeah, it wasn't hard to get to. It's by, it's very close to the city center. Um, and so, yeah, we went to the um, Botanic Gardens. It's right by the Botanic Gardens. And then we walked over to Stephen and Penelope. And then you can walk back through like all the city center stuff or you can just take the tram wherever, wherever you need to go. So yeah, super tourist friendly, lots to do nearby. So easy to convince your friends that you need to go <laughs> if they aren't yarn shoppers um, because it's iconic. And if you're in Amsterdam and you're a knitter, like I, I think you should go. <laughs> <laughs> to at least say you've been there, you've been where Stephen West, like, you know, not resides, but like where he, his shop, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I think it was a very like tourist friendly location. In terms of them being kind to tourists, yeah, for sure. Everyone was super kind. Super kind to Ollie too. Man, he really loved it. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was great um, for that. Okay, the second yarn shop was a little bit more off the, the tourist trail. It is called Hooks and Yarn. And um, this was actually recommended to me by a follower. And um, the vibes that I got, it definitely had more of like a neighborhoody vibe. Um, while I was in there, people were coming in and speaking Dutch and asking questions. Like, I, I don't speak Dutch, so I wasn't for sure. But the gist I was getting was like asking for help with projects or like, asking questions about an upcoming knit night. Um, so that was cool to see, just more of like the neighborhoody things. It was um, on more of the outskirts of the city. Um, definitely more of a crafter vibe than a knitting vibe. I would say Stephen and Penelope was almost exclusively knitting. This shop was definitely more like crochet friendly. Um, they had lots of these knitted animals and I think the yarn brand was called like Sheepies or something. There was lots of patterns around, lots of notions for them. So if you needed like eyes or embroidery, floss, that kind of thing. So it was definitely more like crafty than like garment focused. Um, in terms of yarn, all the affordable yarns were here. <laughs> if you're wondering where they were when you were at Stephen and Penelope, just walk right over and this is where they are. Just kidding. I wouldn't walk. They're not that close. Um, but they had this brand called Fonti, which I had never used before. Um, but it felt very affordable for my price range. They had Jameson's, so much Jameson's, um, BC yarn. They also had a few, like, um, just, you know, maybe a little more expensive, um, commercial yarns, but Lang yarns, Malabrigo, Isier, those kinds of things. Um, and no, they were not marked up. Yeah. 
I did some research like while I was standing in the shop. <laughs> I don't, the, the owner was not watching me, but um, just like Google the prices in the US versus these prices and they were like the same or cheaper. They're not, they were not marked up that I found. Um, okay, what I got, no, no, favorites. My favorite thing about the shop was the Jameson yarn wall. I'll put pictures up, but they had these lovely two big circles with all of the colors and so um, you just like ask them, you say, I want that color and I want like five and they go get them for you. But it was very cool. I was definitely daydreaming about color work for a long time after that. I didn't get any of it. Um, I think a yarn shop, there is one yarn shop near me that carries it, but it's, it's about 40 minute drive, but it's not so far. Um, but yeah, I really, I was like, oh man, I want to make Ollie like color work. Um, I wanted to make him some color work mitt, like gloves and put, make them blue and then put like an airplane on them. So that'd be more like intarsia, but big airplane guy. So I was thinking like, okay, that would be cute. Um, so I really got my creativity going. That was definitely my favorite part of it. Um, what else? Oh, what I purchased. Yes. Yeah, so what I purchased there was this Fonty Super Tweed. Um, it's like a bulky weight, 50 grams for 105 meters. It's 95% wool, 5% mohair. And it is super wash, um, but it has these lovely tweed flex in it. So this is a new to me yarn, but it feels nice. And the price was, was good. It felt like, I don't know, it was, it was good for me. <laughs> so I actually got this for my brother-in-law. Did I already say that? I don't remember. So I got this for my brother-in-law. Um, I didn't get a lot of yarn for myself. I'll just address that now. I got a lot for me, I guess, but there was more I wanted, we'll say that. <laughs> but I had to balance it with limited luggage space since we were traveling with the toddler and then we also were taking trains, a lot of trains. I was concerned about like toting everything around with me and also keeping my child who listens super well and he's not like a runner or anything, but still keeping him like with close to me in a safe distance, that kind of thing. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't really get a ton. I did get a ton, but it's not really for me, if that makes sense. Um, but these were like the souvenirs I brought back for most of my family because that was what, when I said anything you might want and it was yarn. So I got a slipper overs quantity for my brother-in-law. I didn't want to stress him out and get him a sweaters quantity and then him be like, I don't like this yarn. Also, I don't know what to make. <laughs> so I went for, at first I went for hats. So I got two from this shop. And then later on, I found the same yarn and I got three more to make it a, a slip over quantity. Cause I was like, ah, okay, I'll just slip over. And if he doesn't like it, he can just make two hats or three hats, whatever. Um, but I had a few ideas for him. I like the licorice vest by Hohe Locatelli. Um, well, I can't remember any of them, but anyway, I like this tweet a lot. It looks like something he could wear like to work, like a little work vest. I think it'd be very cute. Um, yeah, I just, I feel like the tweed kind of goes with his, his personality. So I was happy to find that. I have definitely looked online on these yarn shops. So all of these yarn shops that I'm sharing now, they have all their yarn listed online. So you could order from them online or you could go visit so you don't have to pay shipping. <laughs> just kidding. That was a joke. Totally. Um, but I definitely prepared beforehand and looked at the yarns for, to pick out for gifts and sort of felt around if my family would like the yarn because I didn't want to be in the store and be super stressed out about it. So anyway, let me see what else I'm supposed to talk about. Yeah. Is it a tourist location? This one definitely felt a little bit less touristy, I would say. Um, there's a lot of stuff to do around it, but it's not like in the city center. So, um, it's like a 15 minute walk from like, uh, if you're at the Anne Frank house, that area, the nine canals, like 15 minutes from there north, but there was still so much to do around it. We went to this incredible vegan bakery. Um, so that was amazing. <laughs> that was like three minutes from this yarn shop. And then afterwards you can walk to Wester Park um, and just enjoy the weather and walking in the grass. That is what we did. Um, we saw a lot of dogs running and we ate a lot of snacks and just enjoy the weather, which we had beautiful weather. So, um, not necessarily touristy location, but easy to get to for sure. And lots of things that you could do if you're up around it. So I think you should definitely go. <laughs> so those are the two yarn shops that I visited in Amsterdam. I am breaking this video up into two parts. So this was part one, Amsterdam. Part two will be 
Brussels and Paris because it's just too much for one video for me. <laughs> um, but I will share that one at a later date, probably next week. Um, yeah, so let me know if you've been to Amsterdam or if you've been to either of these shops or if there's another shop in Amsterdam that you think people should go to. Um, I hope you have a lovely weekend and happy knitting. <laughs>